So your story, your personal journey, is similar to Cyrus and myself, how, how we got into all this is, is quite powerful. So yeah. let's start there. How did you get into lifestyle medicine in the first place? Sure. So, um, so my story begins uh, in October of 1995. I was a third year medical resident. Uh, knew nothing about plant-based nutrition or lifestyle medicine. I was going about my merry way, uh, working an overnight shift at the hospital, <laughs> thinking all was good. And then on that night, it was a busy night, it, around 3 o'clock in the morning, I found an opportunity to take a nap. Um, within 30 minutes of that nap, I was paged again to, to help, you know, to address an issue with a patient. And when I tried to get up, I couldn't feel my legs. It was that abrupt. Scary. Scary. Uh, panic set in, and uh, next thing I remember, Robbie, I was in the ER in the MRI machine, undergoing an MRI of my brain and spinal cord. Wow! Not knowing what was happening, because of course, even though I was a physician, when it you, you you lose all your 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 thinking and all your management skills and your expertise just go right out the window, right? All of a sudden, you're vulnerable, you're fragile, um, and you're scared, and mm. so. Um, the next thing I heard was, uh, this is a classic case of multiple sclerosis. Uh, they told me I had multiple lesions in my brain and spinal cord. The disease was quite advanced and that I could expect to be in a wheelchair within 10 to 15 years. It's incredible. Yeah. So. Uh, and you're not in a wheelchair, so. <laughs> I'm not in a wheelchair. There, well, there's a happy ending. <laughs> but uh, yeah. It felt like, uh, you know, the floor had fallen out from under me and I was not um, not expecting this at all. Again, yeah. you know, I was 28 years old, happy, healthy. I had arrived at my dream to become a physician and mm. I had worked hard to get there and now it's going to pay off. Right. And um, that was not not exactly what um, what happened on that day. So. You know, I I became this uh, MS patient, chronic illness patient, and I did everything my doctors asked of me. I was started on a on a really tough uh, drug regimen, a disease modifying therapy. Uh, had a lot of side effects, and I really really struggled. And by the time uh, about eight years into the diagnosis, so this is 2003, uh, I was dependent on a cane. Uh, I was taking 12 medicines. I used to walk around with a pill box. And I was depressed, and I had lost hope. Wow. Um, and then I came across an article that discussed the connection between diet and multiple sclerosis. Mm -hmm. And it changed everything. It was the catalyst that put me on the path that led to where I am today. And, you know, it was, it was remarkable because I was a dual board certified attending physician, you know, in infectious diseases and internal medicine. I knew nothing about diet and lifestyle. And so this little silly article um, introduced this idea, this connection between um, MS and diet. And, and that led to this insatiable appetite to delve into the literature and really understand these connections. And was this the article about blueberries? Yeah, it was an article about blueberries. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, it was a very small, silly study that that um, essentially fed a group of MS patients a diet rich in, in blueberries. And you know, the doc, the scientist who did this study talked about anthocyanin, this phytonutrient found in the blueberry that gives it that beautiful blue color. Yeah. And they talked about its neuroprotective effects. And, uh, I, you know, I thought it was silly. I remember having lunch with a friend of mine who's, who, who's a neurologist, and I told him about it. He laughed at me. And I, I mean, I laughed, too. I thought it was silly. But it was that little, it was the seed that, you know, was planted in that moment. And it made me think, oh, my goodness. Could this be something? And you know what? Any other time, I probably would have ignored it, but I was so desperate uh, and, and so frightened at, right. at where I was that, that I went back. You know, I went to PubMed and I typed in words like multiple sclerosis and diet and chronic disease and diet. And that's when I came across um, uh, Swank's work. Now, Swank was a neurologist who had um, hypothesized back in the 1950s. There was an article published in New England Journal of Medicine in 1952 um, where he hypothesized that saturated fat was playing a role in the pathogenesis of multiple sclerosis. And he went on to treat patients with MS in the 1950s with a low-fat plant-based diet. And he followed them over, believe it or not, 34 years and found at the end of those 34 years that 
his patients largely remained physically active. They were disability free. In fact, he, he, the, the number that he quoted was 95% of his patients remain disability free. And I was struck by this because every time I went to see my doctor, he talked about the wheelchair. Mm, wow. um, and so uh, it wasn't, of course, just swank. When I looked into the literature in 2003, there was ample evidence that, you know, I started to sort of um, put together this uh, understanding that, that diet was a significant variable in, in um, the the course of this disease, and it could potentially serve uh, serve me. And it wasn't just diet; it was all these other aspects of lifestyle that are that are important components, or what we call the pillars of lifestyle medicine, that include exercise and stress and sleep and so on and so forth. So, in two thousand and three, against um, recommendations, I decided that I would um, very responsibly taper off of every one of those medications, and instead, I would optimize every aspect of my lifestyle. And of course, the first step was adopting a whole food plant-based diet. And Robbie, it didn't happen in a month and it, you know, it, it took time, but I started to feel better. And I went, you know, long story short, uh, from a young woman who was dependent on a cane, a diaper and 12 medicines to uh, a woman who crossed the finish line at a marathon, uh, medication free. And today, 25 years since that diagnosis, I'm medication-free, disability-free, and empowered more than ever before to share the, me the message. Of course, nothing that I did was extraordinary or special or unique or complicated. It's all really quite simple. I mean, that's the beauty of lifestyle medicine is the simplicity of the prescription. It's common sense. And when we apply these principles... In, to, in anyone's life, and regardless of where you are, young, old, sick, healthy, um, it, it, it pays off in dividends. And, and um, of course, I made these changes initially because I wanted to improve my MS, but guess what? I also reduced my risk of heart disease, of diabetes, mm -hmm. of Alzheimer's disease. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, and, and that's why I'm so passionate about conveying this message to whomever's willing to hear it. Your story never gets old. I've heard you share it on a lot of big stages. And, you know, I think people should hit that, like, if you're listening to a podcast app, you can hit the 30-second backward button and you can, like, replay, like, the past 30 seconds. Like, your transformation of, you said, 12 medications. Yeah. Like, these are serious meds, okay? Like, there's serious side effects to these meds. Mm. Um, uh, a diaper, a cane, and now to literally completing a marathon. Like... I'm still trying to run a marathon. I'm working on it. Okay. okay. Like that's a big yeah. deal. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, it's not that I had any, any dream. Uh, it's, it wasn't on my bucket list to run a marathon. It was really for me, it was just like, wow, I can do this. I have the capacity to do this. And I was once told I'd be in a wheelchair. So for me, crossing that finish line was really just, um, I was proving something to myself that these lifestyle manifest uh, changes that I had introduced into my life had certainly borne fruit. Uh, and I wanted to use it not only um, as an example for, for, you know, for myself, for my patients, but also for my medical students mm. and other peers, right? I think that's, that's a big piece of, of the disconnect is that, wow, why isn't this an important part of the medical education that we receive in training? And it's such a missed opportunity.